Hi everyone, I'm Penny Schultz. Welcome to Orient Outreach. Amy Vine, founder of Promised Land Farm and Urban Vine, joins us today to plant seeds of hope during these challenging times. Amy is a gifted entrepreneur, herbalist in training, and a wife and mother who lives on Wildflower Way with her husband, Sean, where they raise their three sons. Amy has a heart for people and her love for others is evident in all she does. Her family started Urban Vine when her mentally challenged brother Danny needed a home and her son with autism needed job security. Her brother and son, along with their friends, would gather in her kitchen throughout the work week, drinking teas and soap to sell in the farmer's market. Urban Vine thrived in those early years and now a group of men work together in a commercial kitchen and at Promised Land Farm to produce a product line that sells in retail venues. Amy Vine's family knows God has a plan and promise for all of us, but sometimes life beats us up and leaves us worn and disillusioned. Promised Land Farms and Urban Vine welcome the disenfranchised and brokenhearted. Please welcome Amy to Orient Outreach today. We're so glad you're here with us, Amy. Thank you, I am so excited to be here with you today. You are a busy lady. I know you have done so much just in this short week that we have. It's Wednesday. Tell us what happened yesterday. We have started an amazing program through Promised Land Farm called Baskets of Bounty. And we are taking baskets of food, kind of a farm fresh meal prep kit, to 22 group homes in Oakland and Genesee County. They have welcomed us in and we've been we were able yesterday to meet with residents and the direct care workers to give them a partnership basket. Mm. They prepare meals every day for their residents and we wanted to just tell them how much we appreciate the need that they're filling in our communities by housing and loving on these men and women in the group homes. How do you stock those baskets? I know you're bringing them pretty regularly. We are every other week from July to November, and we have every one of our baskets is sponsored by individuals in the community, and the majority of the baskets is sponsored by business owners in the community as well. We have um, 25 businesses and individuals that have come on board with us sponsored baskets and also product donors mm -hmm. who have come alongside and partnered with us. Cooks dairy, beef, we have farm fresh produce from our farm, Promised Land Farm. We've also been growing so that we can stock those baskets with produce from the farm as well. Who works at the farm? I have a group of men who come and help once a week at the farm and once a week at Urban Vine. They are men that we are personally responsible for in, in our lives and guardianship. We have guardianship over a couple of them that come. And um, we have been working with them for about six years. In our, We started in my kitchen and then moved to a commercial kitchen in Clarkston. And now we're able to offer the farm as an extension of that program that we've already started and established. It's been amazing. I've been there, I've toured it. I was there recently for a celebration for one mm -hmm. of your sons. Tell us about the drying room. Oh, my favorite room. We have uh, herbs that we use for our products in Urban Vine. We have tea, soap, and salve that we use, mm -hmm. er, that we make with herbs. We are now growing those herbs on Promised Land Farm. The men work with me to plant, harvest, and then we take them to the herb drying room where we have racks of screens that we place the herbs on top of and they sit for however long they need to set to dry. Then we can take them to the kitchen and we process them and use them in our products. It's very exciting. That's incredible. There's pickles involved in this process too. How did that happen? Our pickles are so wonderful. We have a man who actually is related to me who has autism 
and he is um, a prep chef, mm -hmm. loves to cook, loves to be in the kitchen. He was having a hard time hanging on to a job, so he would go in and it was a struggle, and he was getting frustrated. Sure. In October um, of last year, his mom and I were having dinner and she was concerned about him mm -hmm. because he wants to work, but being in a 40 hour a week work week is hard. So I knew about the pickles. We had just gotten into the commercial kitchen. So we said, let's make pickles and see what goes from there. He has his grandma's recipe that he has tweaked and worked mm -hmm. and developed and it's wonderful. So now we're able to make bulk pickles. Incredible. And we are going into markets, supermarkets actually. That's amazing. In the area. Tell us some of those super supermarkets where we can look for those urban vine pickles. We have Neiman's Market is just uh, starting. We're going to be going into Neiman's next month mm -hmm. and I'm very excited about that. Clarkson Family Farm has our pickles available at their market. Wonderful. And then if you're up north at Higgins Lake, my sister Nancy has a restaurant up there and she's carrying those pickles also. That's amazing. So we said you have a heart for people and you're demonstrating that on a daily basis. This young man had a need, you learned of his need, you met with his mom and here's this beautiful product line. But that takes an entrepreneurial spirit to develop. Where did that come from? Oh, my dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. He was an amazing man um, who passed away a couple of years ago mm -hmm. from Agent Orange exposure. He was a Vietnam veteran and who loved people. Yes. When he came home from Vietnam, he purposed in his life to seek out people who other people would pass by mm -hmm. and he lived that example in everything that he did. The farm that we have started is actually on my parents' property and after he passed away it was very hard for us to be out there because it was raw and, sure. and new. And so dad. It was mm -hmm. exactly very dad. Yeah. When um, we, in 2020, I had a vision of how to structure this farm as an extension of Urban Vine. Incredible. So we were able, it was one and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. It has taken off and now we're able to have a home base for our baskets of bounty, which I know he would be all about. He would think that that was the Your greatest dad thing. Would love that. He would love that. <laughs> so <laughs> yesterday walking in to these group homes with baskets full of food that we have grown, that we have connected the community together to support was a dream come true. Amazing. Tell yes. us about your mom because she's helped launch oh. Promise Farm. My mom still lives on the property with my sister, Jessica, mm -hmm. and she has been uh, the driving force behind putting all of this together. Yes. She has been generous to a fault, <laughs> and she has prayed over every aspect mm -hmm. and every area of Promised Land Farm and is now with a new knee out helping us pack baskets <laughs> and watering yeah. hoop houses and taking care gathering of animals eggs. and gathering eggs. Yep. She loves being out there. So you have chickens and goats. What else do you have out there at Promise Farm? Our model for this farm was thinking sustainability. Mm -hmm. And in that we made very sh purposeful decisions to have animals who would provide and give back yes. to the farm. Mm -hmm. We have sheep that we Aww. shear every year and we use those that wool to make dryer balls that we can sell. Incredible. And then um, we have chickens who obviously lay eggs. We just created a space for meat chickens so that we can begin to um, have our own meat 
for baskets of bounties so that we don't have to rely on other people for that. Mm -hmm. We also have um, goats, which <laughs> are not so wonderful in my opinion, but these two goats they are, are adorable. amazing. <laughs> They're therapy goats mm -hmm. is how we look at them. And we have people who come, I want to make sure everyone is safe. Sure. I want to make sure that everyone feels loved mm -hmm. and secure. These goats are that connection. That's beautiful. And they are giving back. And every time I feed them, I think, thank you, because they <laughs> are the ones that will come and love on you and mm -hmm. lay with you in the grass and let Aww. them, you know, yeah. let you lay on them. They're fabulous. You have big dogs out there, two of them, fluffy, beautiful. beautiful. My granddaughter dogs. just hugged them and loved them so much. Tell us about your dogs. Those dogs actually, so many of our friends who come to the farm are um, have s some sensory issues, mm -hmm. and it's hard for them to reach out to an animal. And these dogs are so soft and so fluffy and so kind that it makes an easy, safe connection yes. for our friends. So they have they have um, earned their keep also. <laughs> they, they welcome everyone. They do. It's and they're beautiful. guardian dogs. Yes. So they, they watch and take care of the flocks. Mm -hmm. They make sure things are, all the animals are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And if there's ever a predator, there on it. I love it because you guys got a lot of property that surrounds you. It's, and it's very yes. open. Very well guarded mm -hmm. by the dogs. Yes, it is. So tell us about the group that helped with the hoop house. Oh, Clarkson United Methodist mm -hmm. has um, believed in what we're doing and they have come alongside of us and built a 48 by 50 hoop house for us so that we have a growing, an extended growing season. Mm -hmm. There was it's a, huge. It's huge. It's so yeah, lovely. Beautiful. And w I'm I'm not an actual farmer, um, but I love to get people together. Mm -hmm. I love to have a good party. I love to have people who have um, children. COVID gave us a whole new appreciation for a safe space. Sure. Because we have a lot of Yes. families yep. who have children who were shut in mm -hmm. and everyone was shut in but when you have a child with special needs who is used to a routine and that routine gets stopped and interrupted it creates a whole new set of needs and promised land farm last year was a refuge and a haven for we had a dozen different families separate Beautiful. and they were able to just come with their children see all the animals run around the grounds and be safe mm -hmm. and loved on and it was a really special time my granddaughter was able to come out during that time oh, and your mom right. got her used to the chickens she didn't want anything to do with them at all she was afraid and your mom said, let's look at these together. She took such a, um, a moment for teaching and just helped Madeline adjust and yes. get used to being in that cage with the chickens. And then she was helping care mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. And your mom and your family are like that. You guys welcome mm -hmm. people in no matter what walk of life you're in, right. but you embrace people and yes. the humanity of all of us. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. And you we make are us feel apart. Human. <laughs> yes, we <laughs> are. <laughs> and you make <laughs> us feel so welcome. Thank you. How That's can people get a hold of you? Tell our viewers what's a good way to reach you. We just launched a brand new website at www.urban-vine.com. And that is a perfect way to connect with me. You can reach out on our contact information there. We have information about the farm, uh, sponsoring a basket of bounty, and to buy Urban Vine products. Anything that we've missed that you want to let people know about? I don't think I, oh, yes I do. We have some exciting news. We are going to be expanding already because we need our own commercial kitchen. We have a warehouse in Ortonville that will be fashioned into a commercial kitchen 
that we will be able to go to any time, day or night, and it will be our space to um, make our products and also put together our baskets. It's very exciting. I'm excited to hear that too. You're growing. You keep We're growing. growing. We're growing. Yes. And we'll be able to put um, hives. We have property out there. So we'll be able to put beehives out. So we'll have our own honey. That's which exciting. Will be exciting. And we will also have growing space. So we'll have more opportunity for people to come and work mm -hmm. from our group homes that are in Genesee County. That's incredible. So we'll be able to, as we develop relationships with the people that we're giving baskets to, we'll, we'll know the need. And if there are people who need community and connection, it doesn't have to just be employment. That's, I'm not, um, we are set up for employment, mm -hmm. but we are also making sure that we are seeking people who no one else is looking for. Mm. So I want to be clear that this is specific for people who don't have a support system mm -hmm. and we are set up for that. So Amy, I'm so thankful that you're talking about this. There was a young man, and we don't have to say his name, but can you tell us what his life was in need of and how you saw that need met through the care of a family, your family, and through others who came alongside him. Mm -hmm. When about um, seven or eight years ago, we met a man who was actually my brother's roommate. Mm -hmm. And um, through um, a work situation, and I was able to get to know him. He was obviously suffering from neglect and we knew that the only way to make a difference in his life was to become guardians for mm -hmm. him. After the age of 18, you don't adopt someone, but you can become a legal guardian of an individual with developmental disabilities. So we went to the court and we petitioned guardianship for him. By doing that, as we learned, he he was homeless, which is actually my dad found him yes. on the streets and picked him up and took him into the apartment complex that my brother was living in. And your that father my dad ran. owned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So thank God for your dad and your mom. The wow. foundation that they laid for us to now continue this yes. work has been incredible. Every time I turn around I see if my dad didn't, wouldn't have done this, we wouldn't be able to do mm -hmm. this now. Mm -hmm. So in your life, you, I think as your ministry grows, you reach a ceiling, you can age out. Sometimes, yeah. you know, you, you get to a place where you've done all of these things that you knew you were supposed to do. And that ceiling then becomes a foundation for someone else, which is a lot of times what we call a legacy, mm -hmm. you know. And now we as a family are able to take that foundation and grow even more. Mm -hmm. So our friend um, was homeless, um, was took everything that he could get his hands on because he was so insecure about his next meal, sure. about where he was going to sleep. Mm. And through these last almost 10 years, he has become a part of our family. He, is, he comes to all of our holidays and I see him twice a week at Urban Vine and at the farm and through a lot of medical ups and downs, we have been able to be there for him and my children love him yeah. and he has just become a part of us. And um, I would encourage anyone who um, is able to reach into someone's life, become a guardian, become invested in people's lives beyond your comfort zone because you will be blessed. 
Amy, thank you so much. This has been remarkable that you were able to take some time and get over here today and just share what God's doing in and through your life. And we are so thankful for Urban Vine and Promised Land Farm. Thank you. What an incredible legacy. Yeah. I'm very <laughs> thankful to be a part of that and to help share that with the viewers. Thank you so much for having me today. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Orient Outreach. It has been incredible to have Amy Vine with us today. Check out their website, learn more about Promised Land Farms, and how you can engage with the people on this beautiful property that you will be set right at peace once you enter. <laughs> have a great day, everybody, and I'm glad to see you. I'm Penny Schultz. Thanks for watching.